Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to make this amazing Thai twice cooked beef. It is super duper easy, it's super duper delicious, and if you guys want to see the recipe, then please just keep watching. first time I'm ever doing like a cooking video so I hope the angle is okay and everything but we're just gonna go with it um, for this recipe I am gonna be using the instant pot um, I'm just not the type of person that can stand around the stove um, for two hours waiting for like meat to tenderize um, so I absolutely love this thing so much because it just makes the meat so soft so tender and it like extracts all the flavors for you as most of you guys would know I'm also a med student so I do not have the time to be like standing around the kitchen for too long um, so I just absolutely love any of appliance that like can do the work for me pretty much so I love my instant pot I also have like a um, what's this an air fryer over there which we are going to be using later um, but anyways moving on to the instant pot the first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna take two cups of broth I actually don't have any beef broths right now um, so I'm using chicken stock um, and that's absolutely fine I don't have fresh broth or anything so these are like just bouillon cubes so I just melted it um, in here, there's a bit left, so I'm just going to a bit more water. Next, we're going to use four to six cloves of garlic and maybe one inch of ginger. Um, but if you're too lazy to do that like I am, I'm just going to be using um, this uh, Shan uh, ginger and garlic paste. I'm going to take two tablespoons of that. Next up, we're just gonna take some diced onions and pour it all in the pot. This is the best thing about this recipe. It's just so easy. You just put all the ingredients in one pot um, and the machine will do the rest of the work for you. Then we're gonna do one third of a cup of soy sauce. Any soy sauce um, would do. Uh, the onions are like starting to get to my eyes. Now for the next ingredient, it's actually better if you use Marin. I'm currently out, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take some apple cider vinegar. If you don't have apple cider, you can use any vinegar you want. You just wanna make sure to add like maybe one teaspoon of sugar with it. So I'm just gonna add this on. So I'm using one third of a cup of this vinegar or Marin. Next I'm gonna add some sriracha. Um, I'm gonna add like one tablespoon of sriracha. I don't want this to be like too spicy or anything, um, but if you like it spicy, then you can go ahead and add another tablespoon. Then you're just gonna add a bunch of bay leaves. I'm not even gonna, maybe like three or so, four. You're gonna take some peppercorns. I think I'm gonna put like five in, just like that. Um, if you don't have peppercorns, go ahead and use maybe like one fourth teaspoon of black pepper, like ground black pepper. Next up, we have to sweeten the dish a little. This is the thing that makes like a very, very nice contrast with a lot of um, Asian dishes. We like it like a little sour, a little salty, a little sweet. So for this, um, I would use three tablespoons of sugar, brown sugar, white sugar, or whatever. Um, I'm using equal sugar, the equal granulated sugar, because I don't like processed um, sugar. And if you're using that, then just use two tablespoons of that. All right, so next up we have the meat. So I'm using one kg of beef here. Um, you wanna make sure that the beef kind of has a bit of fat on it, just so that there's more flavor and all that. Um, I actually grew up in New Zealand. Um, so I, my family and I migrated to New Zealand when I was around like 11 years old. So I'm very used to like prime New Zealand beef and that's super duper tender and everything like that. I've since moved back to my homeland and the beef is not the same, not as, like what I'm used to um, and that's why I absolutely love using the instant pot because it just tenderizes any meat you put in it specifically beef like it just makes the beef so yummy um, and it extracts all the flavor and it just comes out so soft and just amazing like I can't I can't um, like recommend the instant pot enough and I swear this is not like a sponsored video or anything I bought this myself um, and I just I just love it okay the normal recipe actually requires you to like cook this for like two hours over the stove, um, the stove top. Um, but because we have this going on, it's only gonna take us like 20 minutes or so. I'm gonna take my wooden spoon right here and I'm just gonna give everything like a little mix just to make sure everything is like well incorporated. All the meat is saturated in all that flavor. Notice how I did not add any salt or anything like that 
trust me, all the other ingredients that we put in here is flavorsome enough. Um, so yeah, I don't recommend putting any additional um, salt or anything like that. So this is what everything looks like in the pot right here. I'm just going to close the lid on this and then we're going to pressure cook it for just 25 minutes and you'll see how soft and tender the beef is after that. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so I'm actually going to show you guys how I set it up. So as you can see, I have my instant pot here and all I'm going to do is I'm going to press pressure cook like that and I'm going to put it on high pressure. And then what we're going to do is we're going to Put it on for 25 minutes and that's pretty much all you have to do um, with this portion right here okay i lied there's one more thing that you need to do make sure that this is pointing that direction and that's going to seal the entire instant pot and make sure that you know it pressurizes and tenderizes the meat and all that kind of stuff um, do not mess with this whole thing here um, while it's cooking um, it will definitely let you know once it's done so just let it do its thing You'll see that that little silver nozzle thing is like down right now, which means that there's no pressure inside the pressure cooker. Um, once it goes up, it means it has full pressure and you do not open the Instant Pot at all once this little silver thing is up. It's only when it's down that it's safe to open. Okay, so while the Instant Pot is like doing its thing, you can go ahead and do whatever you like. It's gonna take like 25 minutes. Um, and in that 25 minutes, you don't need to like, you know, look over it or anything like that. It's just gonna do everything for you, which I absolutely love. You can go and do that assignment you've been procrastinating. You can clean the house. You can watch a show, a TV show or anything like that, catch up on your novel or whatever, anything. And that's the reason why I absolutely love this machine and I recommend it for everyone, like whether you've been cooking for like 10 years or you've been cooking for like a year like me. Um, but yeah, we're gonna be using the um, air fryer as well. Um, another magical um, appliance that I absolutely like love and highly recommend. I'm gonna be frying my um, onions um, in there. You're literally just gonna slice up some onions in like a th in thin pieces um, and it's gonna crisp it up really nicely and we're gonna decorate it on top it's gonna give like the most amazing flavor you can also do it for the garlic but I actually have like this like crispy um, thin garlic chips here um, but it's literally just that it's like sliced up uh, little garlic pieces that someone fried um, you can do it in the air fryer or you can do it um, in the stove top if you don't have an air fryer please don't mind this by the way um, it came with the apartment so it's old so that's why it looks like that <laughs> and yes I'm currently kneeling down because I was trying to show you that um, what's this the garlic chips Okay, so it's been 25 minutes and my Instant Pot actually sounded off saying that it's done. Um, but as you can see, the silver thing is still up, which means there's still a lot of pressure in here. Um, if you're not in the rush, you can actually just leave it and it will depressurize on its own. I think it'll take like another maybe 25 minutes or something. But because once again, we are always in a rush, I'm going to take a wooden spoon like this. This is dirty because this is what I mixed it with before. and like very far, you do not want to be in the line of steam for this one. I'm going to um, push this like that and it's going to release all the steam and pressure. And then um, when that little valve thing is down, it means that it's safe to open. So let's do it together. Three, two, one. There you go. You guys saw that, right? It just went down. That means that it's safe to now open the Instant Pot. So that is exactly what we're gonna do here. Like that. Let's take a look-see. And oh my goodness, it looks so nice. It looks so rich and beautiful. And you best believe that this meat is tender. It is super duper tender. I want you guys to see how tender this is. Like you can just literally crush it <laughs> like that. Um, no resistance whatsoever. It's just super duper tender. I don't know if it's um, showing it, like if I'm showing it properly, but it's just so soft. And of course it's full of flavor. All the flavor is extracted out. Okay, so the name of this dish is Twice Cooked Beef. So you best believe we are going to cook this once again. I'm actually just gonna fry it on a little bit of oil and what that's gonna do is it's going to crisp up the outside of the beef, keeping the inside obviously very, very tender. Um, and it, that little contrast is just going to give the most amazing texture. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so while my pan is heating up, I'm just going to slice 
uh, one onion. I'm just gonna cut it into very, very thin slices. Hopefully you guys can see how I'm slicing it so it ends up like that. Um, and then I'm just going to like um, separate them like so. So I'm just gonna put the onions directly in my air fryer. I'm not adding any oil or anything like that. I'm just gonna put that in there and it's gonna be set on um, 200 uh, degrees Celsius. I don't know why it's not focusing, but it's in 200 degrees Celsius and we're gonna put it on for around 10 minutes or so. Do check after like five minutes just in case because um, we want this to be brown and not burnt. So I'm frying some of the meat over there, um, but I also took the meat out from the stew and placed it on the chopping board. So right now there's nothing but um, the sauce in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to press the saute um, button there and we are going to reduce this sauce. You can add uh, cornstarch, uh, maybe like a teaspoon of cornstarch just to help thicken this bad boy up. Just remember for this, we're not cooking anything anymore. This meat is like cooked and tender. I just want it to get brown on the outside and then um, what's this crispy, like a little bit crispy on the edges. I just checked up on my onions and they look like this right now, nice and crisp golden. If you're not in a rush, you can just reduce everything in the instant pot um, so you don't have to like clean another dish or anything like that. But you know me, I am lazy and I hate waiting around. So what I actually do is I take like a little bit of the sauce right here. As you can see, it's still very runny and not reduced at all. And I'm gonna transfer it to this pot with um, the others that I scooped out um, earlier. And then I'm gonna do it here. So that way it's like a lesser amount and with the heat and everything, it just reduces much faster. Okay, so here's another tip. Only fry what you're gonna eat. In our household, it's literally just me and my husband, so this is enough. Um, so the ones that I pulled out of the stew that aren't fried yet, I'm just gonna leave them in a container and I'm gonna fry them when we're going to eat them. That way it stays like crispy and if you fry like the entire batch and you don't eat it and you save it for like another day, it's just gonna turn harder and harder, you know, the more you like reheat it and stuff like that. So this way it's just much better to um, just fry it when you need to. I'm looking over here right now and my sauce is really like thickening up nicely. You can see that it's bubbling. You can see that there's like, you can just see that it's thickening up. Sorry, it's like fogging the camera. So let's assemble this thing. I have a lovely bed of rice here and I have my fried twice cooked beef over here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up the beef. I'm gonna go over to the sauce and I'm going to submerge it in the sauce. And I'm just gonna add that onto my rice. Gonna repeat the process here. Make sure you're generous with that sauce, that beautiful, sticky, delicious, full of flavor sauce. I'm just gonna put it there. So I added a bit of green onion right there and then I'm going to garnish it with some of the um, fried onion. I'm gonna put a lot because this is really like, it just, the texture of it just makes the dish, honestly. So I'm gonna put it like that. And then I'm going to get some of the um, crunchy garlic chips and I'm gonna crush some in my hands and just drizzle it all on there. Look how beautiful this is, you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed that recipe and please don't forget to subscribe for more recipes like this. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.